Hello, geography students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have your notes for Chapter 13, Eastern Europe and Western Russia. And we're going to look at Section 1, the physical geography. So as we go along, make sure you have your handout ready and follow along and make sure you get items filled in where you need to. Uh, if you need to pause the video, please do so. So we're going to begin with Russia. It is the largest country in the world. Eastern Europe and Western Russia are bounded on the north by the Baltic Sea, which is a shallow brackish sea that lies northwest of Russia and Eastern Europe. During the winter, it freezes over, making transportation difficult. In the winter, uh, the Beirut Sea, and on the south side, you have the Caucasus Mountains, the Adriatic, Black, and Caspian Seas. You have the Ural Mountains, which form the region's eastern border. This is the border between basically Europe, which would be on the east, and what would be Asia on, I should say, Europe on the west, Asia on the east, on this range of mountains. The Black Sea separates Turkey from Ukraine and the Balkan Peninsula, which we've kind of identified before when we talked about Western Europe, where the country of Greece is located. Uh, this is also an area where you're going to see the Caspian Sea being the world's largest inland body of water, which unfortunately it is decreasing in size, and we'll talk about that shortly. So Russia is the home to some 200,000 lakes. Lake Baikal, which is in the south central part of Siberia, is the world's deepest lake. If you look at the diagram below, you have our, uh, our Great Lakes, which are right here. And this is Lake Baikal. Uh, it is super deep. And it's basically deep enough to hold the water of all five of the Great Lakes. Today, it is threatened by water pollution from logging and factories. Eastern Europe and Western Russia rest mostly on a group of plains. Uh, the Northern European plain includes countries like Poland and extends into parts of Germany and the Netherlands. The Russian plain is the largest plain in Eastern Europe and Russia. You also have the Great Hungarian Plains, which is a fertile area located mainly in the country of Hungary. South of Russia's uh, plain, you have the Greater and Lesser Caucasus Mountains. East of the Russian Plain, you have the uh, you have the location of the Ural Mountains, which forms the boundary between Europe and Asia. Uh, the Ural Mountains and the Carpathian Mountains are are separated in Austria by the Vienna or Vienna Basin. Uh, you also have the Transylvania Basin, which is in Romania. Much of Ukraine is on a steppe or a vast level area of land that supports only low growing vegetation like grasses. The Carpathian Mountains are linked to the Balkan Mountains, which is uh, also very isolated has led to a lot of ethnic conflicts among its people. This region, uh, when we have had these conflicts, has a name for it, and it's called Balkanization, which um, if you know a little bit of the history of World War I, that was kind of a part of the start of the war. And in the 1990s, when the former country known as Yugoslavia was um, basically coming out of communism and becoming independent nations, you had lots of fighting among uh, some of the different ethnic groups in this region. Number six, Siberia stretches between the Ural Mountains and the Pacific Ocean. Uh, Western Siberian Plains is an empty land, barren plains. It's very flat and marshy, uh, making this one of the largest plains on Earth. East of the plains is what we call an upland, which is called Central Siberia. It's kind of a plateau. It's a high, it has a higher elevation, a little more rocky. If you take a look at the map uh, below here, you can kind of see the plains here. And as you head towards the east, uh, it becomes incredibly rocky as you head towards the Pacific coast. The Volga River, uh, which is the longest river in Europe, it's also Russia's most important waterway. 
the Volga River and also the Dnieper, yes, that's how that's pronounced, Dnieper Rivers, provide hydroelectric power and water for irrigation. Ukraine's Dniester River, so like for our previous two, there, the D is silent. Uh, this river is an important route to the Black Sea. The capital cities of Vienna, Austria, Budapest, Hungary, Belgrade, Syria, Serbia, excuse me, uh, are located along the Danube River. The climate. Uh, the region's three main climates are the humid continental climate, which is found in Croatia, uh, Serbia, Bulgaria. This is the type of climate that we have in Nebraska. You have warm summer, summers and really long cold winters. Uh, there is also a Mediterranean climate that is found in places like Albania and Macedonia, where you have hot, dry summers and cool, rainy winters, uh, much like what you would find along the Mediterranean Sea or maybe in parts of Southern California. There is also a subarctic climate, which is found in Russia, north of 60 degrees north latitude. You have short, cool summers, very cold winters. And in the northern regions of Russia, this is adding to our, our an, another little additional climate zone. Uh, we have the Novela Zimla, which is a polar climate, has a polar climate. In Eastern Europe and Western Russia, they have abundant mineral resources. It is also a major supplier of iron ore and other metals. About a million people work in Russia's forestry industry. Uh, the majority of the people in Russia and Eastern Europe work in service industries, providing services to individuals and businesses. Russia is a leading oil and natural gas producer. Deposits come from primarily oil fields around, uh, should be Siberia, uh, not Serbia. I will give you a little grace if you write the wrong thing down. And delivered west via pipelines. Uh, Russia's fishing industry is also an important part of the economy. Uh, we have salmon, cod, herring, pollock are among some of the most important commercial fishes or fishing uh, in Russia. Thank you very much.